Today's tutorial is all about how do you build a simple lift arm for a robot. I'm Mr. Pratt and I've been teaching robotics to students for over 10 years now. And today I'm going to show you some CAD files as well as some step-by-step -step tutorials as to how you can go ahead and assemble a robot to have a simple lift arm to be able to pick things up and off the floor. If you want the full CAD of this file, it's going to be available in the description down below. Uh, but otherwise, let's get started by uh, going step-by-step -step here. Go Builder servos come in two flavors. They come in a speed servo or a torque servo. We're gonna be using a speed servo for this, but if you find that your implant's a little too heavy, you should probably use a torque servo. I've already gone ahead and mounted on a 20 tooth servo gear to this, and we're gonna go ahead and push it through from the bottom so that we can put a machine screw through and then a nut on the other side. So let's go ahead and mount this on. So this little plate just allows us to connect spur gears a lot easier. Uh, you'll find that if you try to connect a spur gear on in the standard Go Builder profile, that this ends up being a little bit difficult. Now let's actually start with getting our mount. We're going to use a large arm here, or this is going to be the support pillar, and we're eventually going to mount this up here like so. To be able to mount this to our body, we're going to have to grab a quad pillar block here that we're going to mount down at the bottom. We're going to throw a few bolts in the side here to hold this thing in place. Now, in order to have this mounted in place, we need to put a pillow block on the one, two, three, four holes up as well. So we're going to go ahead and mount an additional pillow block in here. With our 100 tooth gear assembly, we're going to take this little upside on the Sonic cup, we're going to push it through so that we have the outer lip of the ball bearing facing against that section. So let's go ahead and screw that down. Now we can go ahead and mount this to our axle. Go ahead and place that on top. And I'm gonna go ahead and slide this through a little bit more so that we could realistically get another Sonic Hub on the other side. So I'm gonna go ahead and Mount that on, like so. Now, technically for this design, you could go ahead and simply put your lift arm on here, and you could simply rotate your lift arm up and down using this gear. However, the purpose of this isn't necessarily to have the most efficient arm, but it's also to show you another way that you could get a little extra lift. If you were to simply just attach your arm here, you're not gonna get much lift close to the bottom of your surface. Whereas if I were mounted up here, I can get over the edge and I can get up much higher. So I'm gonna mount it up quite a bit higher here and we're gonna use a chain drive to be able to spread that through. So we're gonna make two little sprocket sub-assemblies here. We need another Sonic Hub and a 16 tooth Aceto sprocket here. I can go ahead and lay that on top and go ahead and mount in our four screws. So we're gonna make two of these sub-assemblies. On the other side of this, we're gonna go ahead and mount our eight millimeter ball bearing in, put our shim back on, and then we'll mount our first sonic hub of that sonic assembly we've just done here. Go ahead and twist these two locking clamps on. We've got one half of this ready to rock. Now let's go ahead and mount it to the other side. We're gonna do the same thing, but up top here, in order to support our axle on both sides, we're gonna have to mount another pillow block. And then on this side, we're gonna use another 80 miller axle with two more ball bearings. Go ahead and push one through on this side, throw your shim or your axle on top, and then your shim on top again. Oops, I just dropped my shim. And let's line up our Sonic Cub so that our axle is just barely poking through the top here, just like we did on the other side. That's looking pretty good. We'll go ahead and clamp that down. On the other side, let's put another ball bearing in another shim, and then one more Sonic Hub like before. We can go ahead and clamp this Sonic Hub down right away. Securing our axle on both sides allows it so that our axle doesn't shift or shake or shimmy. So now we can put on our final arm. At this point, we just need to match up where we want this to be and go ahead and mount on four additional screws. The very last thing we need to be able to complete this arm is our chain. So let's go ahead and connect our sprocket together using our chain, let's see. Oh, I love when my guess is correct 
on the very first try. Need a video on how to put these chains together? I've got a video up online for how to do that. I'll leave it in the description down below. So as I twist the arm, our servo moves that arm up and down. Let's get a motor on this. All I've done is I've taken the arm, I've mounted the basic six wheel uh, tank chassis that I've got uh, built up. And effectively, when I take my controller here and I flick it up, our arm lifts up. And when I flick it down, our arm comes back down. In the middle, it stops. So this is a pretty effective way of lifting things up and down off of the ground. You can see it's also got quite a bit of speed, but it's not gonna have as much torque to get up as if you were using a torque servo. A few ways you can get around that. You can swap yourself for a torque servo, or you can do a bit of a gear reduction up here on your sprocket. So you can go from say a larger or smaller sprocket to a larger sprocket up here. That's also gonna give you a little bit more torque coming out. But of course, it's gonna reduce some of the speed of your arm. Other improvements you might wanna think, obviously because this is just a simple two bar lift, as I lift this up, my end point is not actually in line or parallel with my original point. So if I were to use this in its current state, I'd have to add an additional servo to my arm implement to be able to rotate it so that it was capable of staying parallel to the ground. Now, if I were to say mount a quick arm to this, one thing, the problem with this two claw design is as I lift down, you'll notice that my arm does not move parallel to the floor. Um, maybe that's something you want to design, maybe it's not something you do. So you could use a basic four bar lift to be able to keep this parallel uh, to the ground if you want to. So I hope you found that helpful as a basic two bar lift and best of luck with lifting things up in the ground with your robot.